Hello, my name is Will and I'm going to walk you through how you can install Kestra using Docker and get your Kestra configured correctly. Now, when you first jump into the documentation, you'll find this quick example where you can just copy and paste this and put it into your terminal and this will spin up an instance of Kestra. Now, this is great for being able to spin up Kestra really quickly and get jumped in, but it makes it a little bit fiddly for being able to configure settings for Kestra as well as have a persistent database. We're gonna wait for this to download and see what it's like, and then we'll show a few of the alternatives. Okay, great. It's now pulled the Docker image and it's just getting it set up. So in a second, we should see the Docker container spin up and we'll then be able to spin up Kestra in our browser. So we can see here, it's all starting to spin up. And now if I head over to my browser and type in localhost 8080, We'll be, in, uh, we'll be given a new instance of Kestra and we can see it's using the latest version per the command. And like I already said, like we can create, you know, all sorts of different things in here. It's got a bunch of tutorial flows that we can see there as well. Now, if I just create a quick example and I save that, and maybe I can add some extra stuff to this as well. But when I restart the Docker container, we won't necessarily have this here. And that's where we can start seeing some of the downsides for running the quick start in production. So here I've got just a couple of simple flows under the company.team namespace. Now, if I was to just kill my container, let's say I need to restart my machine, whatnot, and then I was to start it again with the same command, it's gonna already, the image is already downloaded, so it doesn't need to download that but it is gonna spin it up and we're not gonna have any of that thing, that data anymore. So if I just give it a refresh, give it a second, there we go. So here we can see there's nothing in the company.team namespace. So really frustrating if you've created a bunch of workflows, maybe, I don't know, you've accidentally closed your terminal and then poof, you've lost everything. So not ideal long-term. Great though for being able to just play around with Kestra and get started. Now we can actually resolve this by adding an application.yaml configuration file. So let's open a new instance of VS Code where we can write this and then we can run that same command but with a separate argument for our application.yaml. So I'm just gonna open VS Code inside of that folder that we had and let me just make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And then we're gonna just simply create an application.yaml. Now we can actually see in the documentation that if I head over to the installation guide and then head over to Docker, I will be able to see in here uh, a, an example configuration file. So let me copy that and we can then paste that into our uh, YAML file here. And as you can see here, I've got the uh, URL that we were talking about. This includes a database with uh, Postgres, which is very helpful because that now means the data will be persistent, but it also gives us all of these configuration options under the Kestra property here. So this is all the stuff that allows you to set up Kestra to do different things, whether that is having authentication, what type of database you want to use, how your local storage is configured. And if you wanna check out more of that, you can find more of that under the configuration guide. So everything you need there can be uh, everything for configuring this block here can be found in that configuration guide. This example is really helpful for being able to save those configurations, but it does require you to spin up a Postgres database in order to persist that data. Now, we can do that very simply by spinning it up separately, but I'm going to walk you through how you can use Docker Compose to spin up both a Postgres database as well as a Kestra server. Let's check that out. Now under installation guides, if we head over to Docker Compose on the left-hand side, inside of here, we're gonna be able to find a link to the Kestra Docker Compose file. So this is the example that we recommend uh, and this will work straight out of the box. So what I'm gonna do now is take this command here, take this back to my terminal and paste that in like so. And when I do that, we can see it's made our Docker Compose file. Now this is quite similar to the structure of that application.yaml where we can see here under the Kestra block here, uh, that is the Kestra container. So it's got the image there, the pool policy, all the stuff that we are putting in our command in the terminal. But we can see under environment, there is an environment variable here called Kestra configuration. Now I'm gonna leave that a little bit bigger so it's a bit easier to see. But this is everything that we had inside of our application.yaml. So that explains how the database is set up as well as explaining any settings that we want for Kestra. So we can do that entirely inside here as an environment variable, but we can also add other environment variables such as secrets or anything else that we wanna be able to access in our Kestra environment. So 
very, very helpful. Now, if I scroll up to the top, we can see that we do have our Postgres database. This is configured to spin up with a few different settings as well. Um, so this means that this will spin up and then Kestra will spin up because Kestra can't work without the database. And we can see at the bottom here, Postgres, it does depend on the Postgres database. Um, so it waits for it to be started because otherwise it will crash. So really helpful. So if you do want to then maybe change the type of database, you can do that in here or again, change that under the data sources bit here as well. Now, with that in mind, we should be able to spin this up and get it working. So now let me open a terminal again, and I'm just going to type in docker compose uh, build. We can just do that to start with, and we can see that it has successfully worked. Now, if I type docker compose up, we can see that it is now spinning up a instance with that docker compose file. Now, if I head back over here, and I refresh the page, we can see this is a brand new instance of Kestra with those tutorial flows. But if I just quickly create a couple of flows, just as an example here, so that's one, I can create another one here, just gonna put number two there. Now, when I go into flows and uh, I can filter by my company.team namespace, uh, I can still see those. So now let me restart that container. So it's gonna wind down. I can now wind it up again. And here, when I refresh the page and we give it a second to reload, there we go, it's all reloaded. We'll still be able to see those namespaces um, that we already created and the flows inside of them. So there is our company.team flow my flow. So it does persist the data. I'm gonna quickly show you how you can actually configure some of this Kestra configuration. So like I mentioned, there is loads of stuff under configuration guide on the website. Now, if I head over to tutorial flows. Let's say I want to disable the tutorial flows because they're in my way. Now I can easily just take this snippet here, copy that, and then I can come back here and just add that in wherever I like. Now I'm just going to add that in here. Um, let me just fix the formatting there. And now once I've done that, I can then put Docker Compose up. It's going to spin up our container again. Now we'll just give it a second to reload. We can see that it has nearly finished running. There we go, server is now running. And now when I go back to flows and I go back to the homepage, now it has still got all those tutorial.flows because I haven't deleted them, but they will not reappear when I restart Kestra. So let me just delete those and we'll restart Kestra and they shouldn't reappear. And there we go, I've just restarted Kestra. We can see that I've only got those two namespaces um, I've only got those two flows in my company team namespace so we can see that the configuration is working. So really powerful how you can configure Kestra and set it up uh, to run how you like. Now, something we haven't discussed is the different types of Docker images that Kestra has available. So there are two main Docker images. We've got just Kestra, and then we've got Kestra-no plugins. Now, by default, that means Kestra comes with all the plugins pre-installed, making it ready to go out of the box however you would like. But uh, if you prefer to have something in a slightly more isolated environment and you want to install some custom plugins specifically for one use case, then you can specify the no plugins approach and you can install the plugins manually afterwards. Um, it is worth noting that we did used to have a dash full tag, which we used to have all of the plugins. Um, if you use an older version of Kestra, that will still be the case. So just make sure you look at the Docker Hub images, which we can do on here, uh, just to make sure you're using the correct image. Now we have two main types of tags as well. And uh, we can actually see all of these on Docker Hub. If I just uh, go over here, we can see we've got develop as well as latest and latest no plugins. But then we also have version numbers as well. If you wanna be able to upgrade when you're ready rather than when we push a new image. Now it's worth noting that inside of here, um, Latest is what we recommend that is production ready and stable. And we have that for both the full and the no plugins option. Uh, but you can also specify a specific version, both again with the full version of plugins and no plugins. But if you prefer to get features straight away or you're looking for a bug fix, then develop is where you wanna go as well as develop no plugins. Now this gets pushed every single time we push stuff to our GitHub repository. So this changes almost daily. So word of warning, it might be a little buggy because things are going live very quickly, but some of the new features are available sooner if you wanna get your hands dirty. Now, jumping back into VS Code, we can see here that I have got it specified to use the latest tag, 
but I have got other examples where I'm using develop or maybe I'm using the enterprise edition, which again have separate images as well. Hopefully you found that useful and you're gonna start setting up Kestra using Docker Compose and get your Kestra configuration set up just the way you'd like. Let us know in the comments below how you're gonna use Kestra's configuration as well as in Slack where you can ask us questions there.